Okay, welcome back. So we are learning Enyakov, the narratives of the Talmud from Tractate Baba Metziah. So this narrative is taken from, or rather anecdote, is taken from Tractate Baba Metziah. And our title today, the discussion is he refused to chop down the trees. Or rather, his trees. He refused to chop down his trees. So, Rabba ben Rabiuna owned a forest on the bank of a river. So, he was asked to cut it down. Why? So that the people who pulled the uh, barges on the river should have space to walk on the river bank. He replied, let the owners of the forest upstream and downstream from mine first clear their portion, then I will cut down mine. So let the owners that are on top of the river and the bottom of the river do their parts, then I will cut my part. Because he, he was in the middle. So, how could he demand such a thing? Doesn't it say, improve yourself and, and then improve other? If you want to have, if you want other people to have a specific uh, temperament, a specific character traits, you have to, to be an example. You have to exemplify that character trait if you want people to have it also. So, over here, Rabbi ben, ben Rabbi Huna was asked to chop down the trees that are close to the riverbank so people can pass by and pass their merchandise, whatever, pass their, their logs of wood. Right, that's right. So he said, no, first the, the one on top and the one on bottom, let them do it, then I will do it. But that's not the way of a rabbi because the rabbi needs to show an example. So you do, you do it and maybe others will follow. So what was his reasoning? And this is a statement in Tzephaniah, the prophet Tzephaniah, chapter 2, verse 1, said this is how the be, uh, behavior should be done. First, be an example to others, and then you can demand. I can demand you, uh, demand of you to put on the filling, or to be nice if I'm not nice. I have to do it, and then I show you, look, I do it, it's yeah, a good thing. Eh? Yeah, role model. So, which is Shlakish in, interpreted it to mean, first correct yourself, then correct others. Right. Right? Do the right thing but yourself. You can't be a brief no, no, but first right. do it to yourself. And when you complete, when people see, wow, look at this, and then they will follow. And you can even ask them to do it. They can. Imagine a doctor tells you, he holds a cigar in his mouth and he smokes into your face. And he says, you know, it's not a good thing to smoke. Maybe you should stop smoking. And he puffs into your face. So what example does it show? I mean, it doesn't show a good example. No. So the same thing over here. First, correct yourself, then correct others. Do the right thing yourself before demanding it from others. Right. The Gemara answers, the forest upstream and downstream belong to Parzak. Who is Parzak? It was a Persian general. So, and since Rabba ben Rabbi Una, knew that the Persian general is not going to cut it down. So what benefit is it going to be for him to cut down his trees? Because he's in the middle of the river. He said the people on top and the people on the bottom should cut down. And then it's beneficial for those who carry wood to bring it down. Understand? Yeah. But if I'm cutting in the middle, how is it going to benefit? It's just going to harm me that last tree, I'm going to have less, less uh, trees. So he knew that Pazak, the, the uh, Persian general, was never, it was never going to cut down his trees, his portion. So it made no sense for him to cut down his trees. For the barge pullers would not be able to pass anyhow. So therefore, Rabbi uh, said, if they cut down their forest, I will cut down mine. Otherwise, why should he do it? Why should I? For if they can still put the ropes, they have enough room to walk. And if not, they cannot walk on this bank in any case. And they have to walk on the other bank. 
and it is useless for them to cross the river just to be able to walk on the cleared portion of my forest. So that makes sense, right? That's why he, he didn't want to get involved. He said, let's first see the top one. Not that he's trying to throw the, the responsibility, but he knew that the other guy's not going to do it. So Rav when Rabbi Chana was sailing in a small boat, when he saw a forest on the river bank, so he asked, whose forest is this? He asked, he wanted to know who, who owns this forest. He was on a boat, Rabbi Ben Nachman, and he asked who, who this forest belonged to. So when he heard, he, he was told that it belonged to Rabbi Ben Rabuna that we spoke about. They didn't want to cut down the trees. So Rabbi Ben Rab Nachman heard that this forest is belonged to Rabbi Ben Rabbi Huna. So when he heard that it belongs to, to Rabbi Ben Rabbi Huna, he quoted, And the hand of the officers and the chiefs has been foremost in this transgression. Ezra chapter 9 verse 2. Cut it down. Cut it down, he ordered when Rabbi when Rabbi Ben Rabbi Huna came and found it cut down. He exclaimed, so he told the people to cut it down. And he exclaimed, whoever cut it down, may his branches be cut down. May his children, God forbid, die. It was said that during the entire life, the entire lifetime of Rabbi Ben Rav Huna, none of the children of Rabbi Ben Rav Nachman remained alive. So it was seemingly over here, it was the wrong thing for Rabbi Ben Rav Nachman to cut down the trees without the permission Right. of Rabbi Ben Rav Huna. Right. We see that he's, he lost, unfortunately lost his children. It says none of them remain alive. So the curse of Rabbi Ben Rav Huna was a, a, was a strong one. But you see that uh, it, usually the approach should be to uh, be a role model, to show an example. But in this case, it made sense. Rabbi Ben Rav Huna knew that it's not happening. So it didn't make sense from because it was owned by the general, uh, the Persian general. So you know, he's not going to be accommodating to those who want to walk on the riverbank and carry their barges. So he figured there's no point for me to cut it down. Welcome to you.